Tell me about it. It's a forest. It's a forest. Describe to me this forest. Uh, tall trees. Mm -hmm. Mixture of pines, oaks, hardwoods, softwoods. Path, path going through. Mm -hmm. I'm on the path. All right, so let's go on the path and see where it leads. Tell me everything you see along the way. The trail's covered with pine needles. Mm -hmm. So I don't make any noise as I walk. Mm -hmm. Look at your feet, the ones that are walking on this path, and tell me what these feet look like. I've got my hiking boots on. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're dark green and brown, mm -hmm. laced up. Very good. And I give my feet good support as I walk. Mm -hmm. So let's keep walking and see where you go. It's going down a hill. Mm -hmm. Have to be careful not to not to slip on the leaves and pine needles. Mm -hmm. What's around you? There's some rocks on the right sticking out over the trail. Mm -hmm. There's foliage on the left with a drop off several feet through the foliage down into a valley. Mm -hmm. I can hear water. Let's find out where that yeah. water is. The trail seems to be following a ridge. Mm -hmm. And as the ridge goes down, I'm getting closer to the to the stream in the valley on my left. Mm -hmm. Describe everything around this. Uh, the trees are giving way to um, more evergreen trees like magnolias. Mm -hmm. Not magnolias, rhododendrons. Mm -hmm. um, Frasser magnolias, I don't know how to say it. Mm -hmm. Sassafras, mm -hmm. kind of trees I like. Mm -hmm. Can you smell these trees? No. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going and see where this trail leads you to. The rhododendron's getting thicker. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in a rhododendron thicket with the trail going through it, and the, I'm on level with the stream now. It's a fairly small stream, maybe maybe 8 to 10 feet across. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be in this place? Very pleasant place. Mm -hmm. The air is good. It's cool, humid, fresh. Feels like good energy. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going and let's see where it leads you to. Let's find out the reason you're on this path. There's a little art footbridge mm -hmm. over the stream up ahead on the left. I'm approaching the bridge. Something undoubtedly built by the park service or something. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in a national park, I guess, or mm -hmm. a national forest. Yes. It's a nice little footbridge. It's not art anymore. It's a flat wooden planks across. Mm -hmm. It's kind of kind of wet and damp and algae covered, kind of slimy from the from the heavy humidity and the the environment. You have to be careful and put a hand on the railing as you go. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going and see what's on the other side. trail goes on and starts moving away from the stream. Mm -hmm. Starts moving up and to the right. I think it's paralleling a, a dirt logging road. Mm -hmm. Let's find but out. But it's not a trail I've been on. I don't recognize <coughs> it. I mean, it's, it's not a trail I know. Now in many of these parks, there are portals. They're portals into other worlds. 
And that's one of the reasons why these parks are so protected, because of these portals. And I'd like for you to use that same ability that you used to find those keys. Imagine yourself putting those fingers up in front of you as you're on this road and begin to search for those portals. And tell me what you're seeing as you're pointing your fingers. I'm looking through my fingers and mm -hmm. moving it from left to right. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing the foliage along the left side of the dirt road. Mm -hmm. There's some sparse areas and some darker areas. I'm crossing the road with my fingers. Mm -hmm. And as you're doing that, <clears throat> ask I for think, guidance. I think there's a there's a faint orange shimmering in the air. Mm -hmm. Very good. Just to the right of the road ahead. Mm -hmm. Describe it for me. What does it look like? Looks like something from a science fiction movie mm -hmm. where there's a Almost a, almost a vertical liquid shimmering circle in the air. Mm -hmm. so I, I can't see the trees through it. It's, it's opaque to me. Mm -hmm. So allow yourself to get close to that shimmering <clears throat> and step through it. I stepped through and I think I'm in a bookstore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's find out where you are. Describe this place. It's a um, used books, private. It's not a chain or anything. It's mm -hmm. somebody's private bookstore or, or bookshop or personal library. I don't know, but there's, there's used books, old dusty books on shelves all around me. Mm -hmm. Does this bookstore uh, look modern or ancient? What does it look like? It could be from from the present back to a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could. It's. Let me walk through a little. Look through and tell me everything you see. Uh, I think it has a resonant cat. Mm hmm. There's a, that cat. there's a black cat sitting on a a box or a, I think it's a wooden box to my right mm -hmm. beside one of the book aisles. It's lying down. Mm -hmm. Now you can communicate with cats. So begin connecting, connecting with that cat. And let's ask it where you are. It said, hi, John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's find out what the cat's name is. I'm not getting a name. Mm -hmm. Ask the cat. I ask it where I am. Exactly. It starts with a G. Mm -hmm. Garl or Glarl or something like that. Mm -hmm. yep. What is this place? Why are you here? Gloring. Gloring. Gloring, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the bookstore? No, I don't think it's the name of the the town or the country or the... Mm -hmm. There's a... Um, Cobblestone Street out front. Mm -hmm. Let's do some exploring. Uh, okay, I went out the door. The 
door had glass in it. So it's, in terms of year or whatever, at least it's when they have glass, mm -hmm. clear glass. And I think there was a little bell on a thing at the top, so when the door opened, it rang a little bell. Mm -hmm. And as you're going out the street, I'd like for you to notice if anything has changed about you. Look at your feet, your attire. Has anything changed? I'm wearing black boots. Mm -hmm. Not not hiking shoes. These are, and I think I've got a a cane or an umbrella. Mm -hmm. I've got a hat. Mm -hmm. I think it's a. It might be a top hat. It might be a. I don't know what they're called. Mm -hmm. A Lincoln, a, a, mm -hmm. a stove. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking? A yes. stovepipe hat. Yes. I think I'm dressed. Uh, not formally, but uh, mm -hmm. like somebody of means. Mm -hmm. Do you have any outer jacket or anything? Yes. Like that? Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a dark, I think it's dark gray, mm -hmm. dark gray coat, um, a white or off-white shirt. It's, it's kind of like a, a dressy, dressy shirt, but it's not a modern shirt. Mm -hmm. So let's find out where you're going to. Go out into the street and tell me if you see any people. I think there's two women down the street on the left mm -hmm. with, yeah. with big, big dresses on, the mm -hmm. kind that stick out. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to figure out what kind of clothing that area is. I mm -hmm. don't know, 1800s? Mm -hmm. It's okay. And I think I'm walking to my office. All right, so let's find out what office that is. Take a look all around and see if you see any names, any signs. What is it that you do there? I think I give people legal assistance. Mm -hmm. I can't read a name on the door, but mm -hmm. I've seen this life in other, in self, Mm -hmm. Self stuff I've done looking for past lives, and I've seen scenes from this same life. All I right. think. So let's continue and see what it is that you're doing I there today. I think I'm opening my office. Mm -hmm. So tell me everything that happened. I'm open the door, and I have a desk and a little bookcase with about five, five big volumes on the bookshelf by the desk. Mm -hmm. They're legal books. I put my hat on a shelf by the door. I lean my... It's not an umbrella, that's a cane. I lean my cane up on the... against the door, on the, against the wall by the door. Mm -hmm. I sit down in an old wooden, dark wood chair it creaks. And um, it's like I'm at my desk and I'm going to start going through my books and figuring out what I'm doing today and I'm open for business. Wonderful. Wonderful. So now let's go to a scene in that same lifetime when something important is happening. See yourself there.
I'm standing with a, a younger, a man and woman, a, a married couple, in front of their little farmhouse. And they are thanking me profusely because I, they were going to lose their farm and I did something legally to make it so they could keep their farm. How does that feel? Check in with your emotion. It's, it's emotional. I feel emotion. Mm -hmm. it, it, it feels good to have helped them. Mm -hmm. And I think it was hard. Mm -hmm. Can you see this young couple's eyes? Can you see their faces? Or do you just get a feel from them? They're fuzzy. I mean, I, it's like mm -hmm. I can feel them, but Wonderful. I can't see detail. All right, very good. So let's leave that scene now, and let's go to another scene that also affected you when something happened. Where are you? No. Not sensing anything. Mm -hmm. Let's go back and let's find a time in that same lifetime when something important was happening. I'm in a pub mm -hmm. drinking from a um, uh, I think it's a metal mug with a handle with a friend of mine, a man. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm around 30, mm -hmm. maybe late 20s. Mm -hmm. He's about my same age and we're best friends. Mm -hmm. Is this the same lifetime? I think so. Mm -hmm. What does he call you? What name does he call you? Uh, his name starts with a V. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vargas or mm -hmm. Var Varnus, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think my name starts with a J, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's John. Gerald? Mm -hmm. Gerald with a J? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Ger okay. When I say Gerald, does that. Resonate with you? Gerald, Jerome, Ger mm -hmm. Gerald sounds better than Jerome. Mm -hmm. Very good. Gerald. <coughs> maybe it's Gerald. Gerald? Gerald. I think that's more like it. But mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's like J E R O L. Mm hmm Gerald. When I say the name Gerald, does that sound good? How does that feel? Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't feel like me. I don't mm -hmm. know. Very I'm not good. sure. Well, we can just go on and see what is the intention of this meeting with your friend. How does it feel? We were talking. I mean, we're we're not drunk. We're just talking to each other and drinking a an ale of some kind. But we're talking about something important. I can't I can't get a sense of what it is, but mm -hmm. it's. It's something that we disagree on, but we're not arguing. It's it's like a course of action that I'm thinking one way might be best, and he's thinking another way might be best. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to convince one another of why our way's the better way to go. Mm -hmm. So let's find know. out 
what you decide. Mm -hmm. Seems like it has to do with what what land we're going to buy or what mm -hmm. house we're going to buy. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere higher. It's in higher country, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure why we're both involved. Or maybe I'm helping him with the purchase mm -hmm. in my legal capacity. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's it. But we're friends. It's it's. It's not a business relationship, it's a friend relationship. But I'm using my expertise to, to help him. Mm -hmm. To buy that That's land. It. Or I think so. He wants one thing. Or, and you, or a house. Mm -hmm. And I think there's, there's reasons I think it might be a bad thing for him to try to do. Mm -hmm. But he wants it, and I'm willing to help him get it. Very good. So let's see what happens after that. Let's continue with this scene. Oh, I think he's making a... He's building some kind of a, a mill that has a water wheel by a stream. Mm -hmm. And he wants to... He's, he wants... It's like a business. He wants to be the proprietor. He wants to run the mill. He wants to grind the... Whatever it is they grind. The corn or the grain or something. from the paddle wheel turning in the stream. Mm -hmm. And I think he does it. Very good. Is there anything else to know about this scene? How do you feel? I, I feel good. I think I helped him get it. Mm, good. Very good. So how does that feel? Feels good. Wonderful. So now let's close that scene and let's go to a time when you're older and something important is happening in that life. I'm sitting in a chair. Mm -hmm. How old do you feel there? 70s. Mm -hmm. What's happening? Uh, I feel weak, tired, I feel old. Mm -hmm. I think I'm alone. How do you feel there, being alone? I think I'd like to have some company. Mm -hmm. So what happens next? I think I, I think I nod off and, and die sitting in the chair. All right. So as you leave that body behind, I'd like for you to tell me what happens during that transition. As you leave that body behind, what do you see and experience? I see, I see the countryside. Mm -hmm. I see my friend's water wheel. How does that make you feel? It's a comfortable place. I like it. Mm -hmm. And as you look back at your lifetime, as you leave it, what was the purpose of that lifetime? To use my, my um, intellect, my my uh, skills of reading and learning and the law to help people. Mm -hmm. Did you learn any lessons in that lifetime? Through all my customers, I learned that sometimes you need help and you have to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Very good. So allow yourself to continue floating away from that lifetime and tell me what happens where does your soul go
It's, I don't have a body. I'm floating upward fast. Mm-hmm. What do you experience? It's dark, but it's there's kind of a gray mistiness around me. Mm-hmm. What else? I haven't got anywhere yet. (laughs) (laughs) How does it feel to be there? It's funny, I I feel kind of lost Mm -hmm. at the life I've just had Mm -hmm. and nervous about what's to come. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what's to come. Where do you go? Be there now. I'm standing beside a man under a white arch. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's kind of like, it reminds me of a set decoration on a stage, like just to put something there to give you the sense of what kind of scene it is. Mm-hmm. What's this man look like? Uh, Whitish robes. Mm -hmm. Um, White hair. Mm -hmm. Long hair. It's over his ears. Mm -hmm. Who is this man? He reminds me of somebody, but I can't place him. Mm -hmm. What does he say to you? Uh, it's telepathic, it's not mm-hmm. verbal. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's uh, an approval of, of what I've just done and been, and it's like, like where you've done another one or a good job or that kind of sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he thinks, okay, let's go meet the others. Mm-hmm. So let's see what happens. And there's there's several people. Um, we're not in a room or anything. It's just kind of like kind of like I said with the set before. It's it's there's nothing really there. They're just. It's not even as if there's a floor. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like there's, I don't know, six or seven beings just kind of floating around in the air talking to each other. Well, they're just looking at each other. Mm -hmm. Um, Trying to figure out if there's, if they're all men or men and women or... Mm -hmm. What does it feel like to you? It feels like at least that there's at least one woman in front of me to my right, I think, but I feel like the rest are men. Mm-hmm. And there's only, I think there's only five. Counting me, I think there's maybe only four of them and one of me. So Three men and a woman maybe and me. So let's find out who they are. Connect with them. I think the man that met me did so because it's like it's like he's the most genial mm-hmm. or he's the one that he gets along with me the best mm-hmm. okay. and so it was like he was the one that came to meet me and the other three men and the woman we all respect each other and but we're not friends really mm-hmm. what's their role i'm not sure she seems ancient she seems 
like some kind of powerful being from a long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. Connect with her and ask her if she has a name that's known. Lyra? Lyra? Mm-hmm. Lyra? Lyra? Mm-hmm. That's, that's what comes to me. Mm-hmm. What about the others? Josh was the name that came to me for the guy beside Lyra. Mm-hmm. What is his mm-hmm. role? And I think Ezekiel mm-hmm. came to me as the guy beside Josh. Mm-hmm. God, that met me. I, God, I know his name. I can't think of it. Mm-hmm. What do they call you? Do they have a name for you? Gerald came to mind. Gerald. Mm-hmm. So let's find out. I think I think we just got told that was it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Ger- the- Gerald, and it's not Gerald, it's Gerald. J-E-R-O-L. I think so. Mm-hmm. So let's find out what Gerald has to do with these others. Why are you back with these? I think it was my turn. I think we're taking turns. Mm -hmm. I think now I get to be in the group and one of them has to go. And what is it that your group does? Who are you? I don't know, but we... It does feel like it's like we're a team, mm-hmm. and it's like it's 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 like we're a good good working team. It's like we work well together and we do what needs to be done. It's I, I, you know I said we weren't friends and we're not really, but but we all respect each other's abilities and attitudes and whatever, mm-hmm. and we have some function that. Let's find out what that is. What does your know. group do? I don't know. Connect with that knowing. You're all taking turns, but let's find out for what purpose. It seems like we're some sort of coordinators or facilitators, or it's like. We take turns and each one of us has to go down to some spot that's been selected and work with a certain group of people mm-hmm. or a certain it's 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 almost like there's a whole bunch of work teams or there's a whole bunch of beings working together down below somewhere. Mm-hmm all in different groups with different aspirations and different goals and all that and for some reason certain groups get assigned helpers Mm -hmm. and it's like one of us whoever's turn it is has to go and help one of the groups down below it's something like that Mm -hmm. it's it's like it's like a coordinator to help help them go find their direction or keep them on track or Mm -hmm. Or something like that. So as, a, as someone who was giving counsel to others, was that your role in that lifetime? Yes, and that's what I did as general. I, mm-hmm. I helped people navigate the intricacies of whatever the legal system was in that period mm-hmm. and make it work for them instead of against them. Mm-hmm. So let's find out what lies ahead now I want you to go see your, see what is the next time that you get chosen let's see how it's done I'm getting the I'm getting that I was chosen to go down into some some village pre-technology. Mm-hmm. 
or without technology. I don't know whether it's pre-technology. Mm-hmm. For what purpose? I don't know. To mm-hmm. it's like a it's like a native a native village with. What are they? The, the the people are brown, like, I don't know what country, uh, mm-hmm. I'm thinking South Pacific Islands. Mm-hmm. So who selects those people for you to go to? I don't... Let's find out how that selection process works. Do you pick it? The team that I'm on... There are thousands of such teams, or millions. I mean, there's a lot of those teams, Mm -hmm. that team of five people. And it's like there are thousands and thousands of groups on Earth that need help. Mm -hmm. And there's some kind of, I don't know, in some way the groups on Earth that need help get aligned with different teams and somebody gets picked to go help them. Mm But I don't, I don't know the details of the picking. But I think my turn was to go down and help that village. All right, so let's see yourself now in that process as you go to that village. I'm supposed to, uh, I'm supposed to bring them the kind of... Uh, analytical ability to figure out the things they need to have done and then make things to do them. It's like I'm, I'm it's like a, it's like I'm their IT guy. <laughs> uh-huh. Very good. It's like I'm the, uh, the help desk for a native village except I'm one of the natives mm-hmm. and I help them solve problems and build contraptions and so you bring solutions. Make boxes or whatever. I mean, whatever kind of stuff they need, I help them devise ways to do that. Mm-hmm. You bring the That's solutions. That's funny. That's uh-huh. funny. So I'm, I'm to help them progress technologically or to make their lives easier and help them progress with tools and gadgets and processes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Kind of like I'm an efficiency expert for natives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) So do you see yourself in that life? Or are you just observing it? I I think so. I think I'm tall. Mm -hmm. I'm skinny. I'm tall and skinny. Um, Trying to sense what I'm wearing. I think it's some kind of cloth. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's like animal hides or something. It's, it's some kind of cloth. Mm-hmm. What do you call yourself in that lifetime? G Jibo? Jibo G- or J- Jambo or mm-hmm. Jibo? Jibo is what comes to me. Okay. So, Jibo, how old are you there now? Uh, 38, Mm -hmm. 39. Mm -hmm. What do you do during a day? What's your role there? Um, it's like, like one day I'm supposed to go help the guy who's fishing because his nets aren't right. Mm -hmm. Or he doesn't know how to fix his net, or he doesn't know how to string his net across the stream. It, it's something like that. He, he, mm-hmm. I'm helping him, but the technicalities of fishing. Mm-hmm. There's some. I have a. I had an idea that I think will help him. I can't think of what the idea was, but there was some way I was going to help him. And it's like each day there's some something like that, or like somebody else is 
they're um, making furniture for the little houses and I thought of a better way to make a piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I have no creative ability, mm -hmm. but apparently I'm a problem solver and creative in that life. Mm -hmm. So go to the end of your life in that lifetime and see what happens. I think I was bitten by a poisonous snake. Mm -hmm. I think I stepped on a poisonous snake at night and he bit me and my legs swelled up and I got real sick and I died. All right, so let's see the transition out of that lifetime and tell me what happens when you return back to your team. Who's there to greet We're you? laughing. The five of us are laughing. <laughs> They're making, they're making jokes about stuff like, I couldn't believe what you did with that so-and-so plan. <laughs> they're, they're laughing. They're, but, I mean, they're not laughing at me. They're just acting like they were keeping up with my life and thinking it was funny. Like, And I'm making jokes like, ah, you just wait till you guess what you're going to have to do next time. So how do you it's, feel about that lifetime? It was a good one. I... I I helped the people and I enjoyed what I was doing. I enjoyed my tinkering. I enjoyed my by trying to solve the problems. That was my joy in that life was, was problem solving. Mm -hmm. Not human problems, but mechanical problems, mm -hmm. like, you know, mechan technical, technological problems. Mm -hmm. And that was my joy in it, and it helped the people that I lived with, so it was it was good. But, you know, I think I was alone in that life, too. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have a family. So let's find out from your team why you choose not to have a family and to be alone. Do you have some sort of agreement? Yeah, I was alone as the lawyer too. Mm -hmm. Let's find and out. I'm alone you, now. Let's find out if there's some sort of agreement there amongst your team. If there's any rules that you need to go by. It seems like I have had partners in the past, mm -hmm. and right. I'm not as happy, and I'm not as effective. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like it, 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 it holds me down, it holds me back. Mm -hmm. That's the sense I'm getting. Yes, so you've made a decision. So it's, it's like I've made a decision to be alone in my life. Okay, and that, that way you get more done? I think I enjoy my life more when I'm that way. It, 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 it seems like it unencumbers me. It, uh, I mean, I'm free to do what I want and, and pursue my interests and not have to deal with, with all the problems involved in, you know, human interaction or... Mm -hmm. Very good. I mean, I can help people, but... It's from coming for a place of my skill, which is, you know, to help them solve problems and build things, and it's different from, uh, I can't think of the word, I'm not good at solving problems between people. Okay, very good. I'd rather work with things than people, I think. Mm -hmm. That's it. So now let's close that scene and let's go to the scene right before you came to the lifetime of John. I want you to see yourself with your team, with your guides, in preparation for the lifetime of John. And let's find out what's happening there. Who's with you? I think more than one of us. I, I think 
it seems like all five of us are coming down this time. Mm -hmm. Let's find out why. What's important about this lifetime that all five are needed? Whose decision is it to send everyone? I think it's, I think it's like a decision that has gone through all the groups, the thousands of teams I talked about. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like wherever there's room for people to come in, whoever can incarnate will. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, it's almost like there's not enough people born to hold all the people that need to help. Mm -hmm. So let's find out even further what is the decision why everyone is needed at this time. Well, I th my sense of my own coming down was it was very important. It, it, it was a time of changes and I needed to be here. Mm -hmm. I needed to be here and I wanted to be here both both to help and to observe, and, and to observe as much as help. I wanted to see the changes. I wanted to see, I wanted to be a part of the transition. Mm -hmm. Are you getting any sense of what the transition is? Well, it, 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 it feels like an end times of sorts, but I don't know, I mean, I don't, I, I mean, I, I see several potential futures, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't know which, which ways they're going to go. All right. Tell me what you're seeing. I see lots of disasters. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the... Uh, I read a book called The Hab Theory about how every 11,000 years or so the earth capsizes due to the weight of the polar ice that's not evenly distributed around the poles and so it gets heavier and heavier and the earth tilts so that the ice is then at the equators where it's spinning. Mm -hmm. And each time it happens there's a big upheaval and civilization has to start over. Are you seeing that scenario? I'm seeing that as a possibility. Mm -hmm. What other thing do you see? Um, and I'm seeing wars as a possibility, mm -hmm. with everybody just just fighting and fighting and fighting over nothing. And I see a peaceful world as a possibility. So do any of these, are any of these the ones that you are hoping for, or are you just observing? Does it matter? Oh, well, I'm, I'm trying to help with the peaceful world. Okay. But it's not a done deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like, I feel like it's a, it's a state of flux now, and the reason everybody's coming down and helping is because we're trying to make sure it goes one way rather than the others. Mm -hmm. Do you pick any particular family when you come? Is that a choice? I think I picked the location. What was it? Why was the location important? So that I would feel more secure inland mm -hmm. and wouldn't be subjected to coastal problems and wouldn't be con con subjected to extreme winters like up north or hot you know of the tropics mm -hmm. i'm from north carolina so it was like i uh, wanted a, a good temperate location that was fairly stable and inland mm -hmm. And I guess uh, a family that 
parents that seemed stable and dependable that, you know, that I could feel secure in my family. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now I'd like for you to see yourself at the moment before birth. And tell me what happens. Is there anybody who who is there to give you any advice? Paul. Paul was the guy, the, the member of the five that met me. Mm -hmm. His name was Paul, I think. Mm -hmm. Is he there? And he's there before, before my birth. And what does he say to you? I think he wishes me well, and he gives me the sense, it's telepathic, but he gives me the sense that this one's different from the others. This one's, this one's going to require more ad-libbing or more flexibility or more... In other words, you're going to have to find your own way more and, and, and put your solution-finding abilities to work. In other words, there's no straight path. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be guiding you? Right when you said that, Mm -hmm. I thought the name Mephistopheles, and I don't even know who that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's a... I mean, I'm showing my ignorance here, but I know the name, but I don't know what the legend is or the mm -hmm. belief or the... I don't know who Mephistopheles is. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine that that's, that doesn't resonate at all with me as to who's guiding me, mm -hmm. so I don't know why I thought of that. Very good. Is, is that your guide, or does that come... I don't think so. Okay. But that name came to mind as soon as you said, who's guiding you, so... Very good, very good. Of course, I also got Popeye. Mm -hmm. I don't know why Popeye's guiding me either, but I got Popeye. <laughs> very good. Anybody else there? Any other tips or advice? Paul. Apparently, Paul... Paul has very short lives. I mean, Paul, it's like he's, it's kind of like he's the ground control for our team, or it's like he's the one that's in and out the most. He's, he's the one that's often there to help us. Mm -hmm. But then he has lives too, but his lives are always short ones. Mm -hmm. that's, that's interesting. How short are his lives? I don't know. He, he dies as a baby sometimes. Okay. He, he, it's like he he does quick trips and comes back and guides some and then does another quick trip and hmm. but I don't I don't know if that's Paul's Paul's world. I mean I I'm not in on his decisions. Very good. All right. So let's just take a deep breath in and let's connect now with your higher self, that voice within. Do I have permission to ask questions today? Yes. Thank you very much. I'd like to know, first of all, why you brought John here today. What did you want to tell him? I saw it as an opportunity to help him get over some of his problems. Mm -hmm. What did you so want to work a, on today? It was an opportunity to help him get over some of his fears or mm -hmm. anxieties. Mm -hmm. Now he tells me that he's been working on his own body to get rid of some of these hitchhikers. Have you been helping them with that? He's been doing it by himself. Mm -hmm. Mr. I've watched. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Man. How is Mr. Man affecting him? Mr. Man is gone, but he affected Sean a long, long time. So it's hard to hard to shake off. Mr. Man was mean. What did Mr. Man do to him? How did he affect him? If John had the slightest bit of fear over something, any fear, Mr. Man would exacerbate it. He would Im amplify it. Mm -hmm. He would, it would be like that was his end to, to try to increase John's fear. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and he tried to make John anxious all the time. So he's he, he he liked to be in control. He liked he was a he was a dominant person, a dominant entity. Mm -hmm. He And how did he get Mr. Man? What was the first time that Mr. Man influenced him? I think he I think he came when John was in the second grade. Mm -hmm. Was it uh, that swimming? I think he came when John was in New Haven, Connecticut mm -hmm. for one school semester mm -hmm. in the second grade. And and he made John's vision bad. Mm -hmm because that was scary and it gave Mr. Man more control. Hmm. Anything he could do to, to make John scared, he would do it. Does that include interaction with people? Mr. Man didn't like other people. He didn't want to share John with people. Hmm. He wanted them all for himself? He was, he was John's project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so did that interfere with him getting along with people or being out in public? Yes. Okay. yes. So how has he changed now? What kind of future do you see John having now without Mr. Man? I see, see him being not outgoing, but more, more receptive, more, more open to, to human interaction. Okay, very good. Now, we, we saw him going through two different lifetimes, and he said that when he was a freshman in college, he was able to manifest a key. How did that happen? He needed a key, mm -hmm. and he needed his roommate's key right then. His roommate had lost his key out on campus, and he materialized a key behind the books on the bookshelf. Mm -hmm. Now this ability that he has, is this innate in himself, or is this something that all can do? Everyone can do everything. Mm -hmm. What's we're, we're only limited by what we think we can do and what we can't do. We're limited by our beliefs. If we know we can do things, then we can do them. So that's why he did it. He just knew. Well, it wasn't even a matter of, of a belief. He he needed a key, so he made a key. It wasn't, it wasn't a conscious process. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a, he didn't try to make a key. He just needed a key, and so there it was, because mm -hmm. he had that ability. Good.
Good. And you say that everyone has that ability. Everybody can do that. Mm -hmm. Everybody can do that. We just have to it's know just that. It's hard to know. It's hard to. It's hard to to have that certainty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we can manifest what we need when we need it. Is that why? Really, there's. Does anybody? Does everything in nature know that too? Does everything in nature manifest what they need, or is it just humans? I'm thinking of. I don't, I don't know. I'm thinking like if a tree needs. Yes. Water. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> If it's thirsty, it, it rains. I think the ability increases as the, as the order of being increases. I mean, mm -hmm. the ability comes with, I mean, like the angels can probably do it better than people and people can probably do it better than, than dogs and cats and mm -hmm. so on down the line. Mm -hmm. But I guess if a, well, of course a tree can, because the trees that couldn't aren't there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so those trees that are that are more knowledgeable at, yeah. at their power. Yeah, and the trees that couldn't do it, they didn't have the power. All right. Okay, good. That makes sense. Now, we had, we had briefly touched on how he decided to come to this incarnation. And he wanted to know in preparation for it, what goals did he set and what limitations did he impose on himself? to increase his likelihood for success. We saw that he was needed. All souls were needed at this time from those teams. Can you elaborate more about that? He needed to share positivity, mm -hmm. optimism, mm -hmm. help, help elevate or help increase the frequencies of the people around him or the people that he interacts with. Mm -hmm. Is he doing it? And, and he wanted his freedom. Mm -hmm. He wanted his freedom and he was worried about reincarnation and getting stuck in the cycle of having to live multiple lives based on past screw-ups or past problems or past traumas or whatever. And he tried to make it so that he would be alone. Because if he was too interconnected with people or too emotionally involved with specific people, he was likely to create karmic debts and he didn't want karmic debts. Mm -hmm. And so he, he designed his life the way it is. So it is successful. I guess. Mm -hmm. What do you as a higher self say to him about his life? Has he been successful? Yes. Mm -hmm. he, he, doesn't, has, he doesn't think so. And he has been shocked at the times when people have told him how much he has helped them and he wasn't even aware of it. Mm -hmm. Just 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 a little while ago an old friend of his from childhood told him by email uh, his his friend had cheated at cards once in a way that he couldn't get caught. And John told him he shouldn't do that. And the guy said, you know, why? Nobody, nobody knew it. Nobody could catch me, and I won. Uh, and I said, yeah, but you don't, want to, you don't want to know you're a cheater. You don't want to think of yourself as a cheater. You don't want to be a cheater. And he told me a little while ago that that changed, changed his life and that he has always remembered that and has tried to follow that for the rest of his life. And so there's, there's little things like that where I've, I've helped a lot of people I've come into contact with and I haven't even known it. Mm -hmm. And with my, my websites, I've helped a lot of visitors too. So I've had, I've had millions of visitors and 
Mm-hmm. So it's helping. He came here to help, and he's doing it in his own way. Yes. Mm-hmm. So he says he's trying to clear his karma and contracts and leftover effects from from uh, traumas and this and past lives. He wants to know if there's anything that we can clear that he hasn't been able to clear on his own. Does he have any karma? He lacks confidence. Mm -hmm. Where's that coming from? And he needs to... He'd be much stronger with more confidence. Mm -hmm. So where is this confidence not, not, uh, where is it leaking out of? Because when he came here, he knew he was a powerful being. What's allowing that confidence to slip away? It's hard to have confidence when you can't use most of your abilities. <laughs> mm. All right. So would you show him some of those abilities or tell him about some of those abilities that perhaps he doesn't know he's even using? He can foresee things. Mm-hmm. He's often telepathic and knows what other people are thinking. Mm-hmm. He's a good analyst. Problem solver. But the lack of confidence is because he feels very, very powerful and has so much trouble manifesting those powers. Mm -hmm. Now he told me a story of something that happened to him when he was a young child. Did this have anything to do with him losing his confidence when they stripped away? everything from him. Let's take him back to that moment. Let's see what he lost. When he had a strip away. It was it was even before that. All right, let's take him there. Take him to that memory. He was born I think 6 weeks premature. Mhm. Weighed three pounds, four ounces, Mm -hmm. and spent the first several weeks of his life in an incubator. So let's find out what happened during that time. Take him back to that moment. Let's see what he's feeling. Fear. Mm-hmm. What's that? Terror. Fear? Mm-hmm. What? Alone. In a in some sort of machine or contraption or box or. Mm-hmm. So where is all of this fear and alone and all of those emotions trapped in his body? (laughs) In his feet. All right, very good. So let's bring those emotions up and let's find out what's going on with him. I'm going to move that those emotions up, bring them up, 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 as those emotions come up. I'd like for you to go ahead and express yourself. I'd like to speak to that fear. 
Good afternoon. Hey. Can you tell me how you came about being with John? Did you attach to him or did he create you? Always been here. Always been here. Mm -hmm. So did he create you? Or did you follow him? Tell me what that always been here means. I was with him in the hospital. You were with him in the hospital. Mm -hmm. As a baby. As a baby. Did you ever have a human body? Gillespie. Gillespie. Is that your name? Yes. Mm -hmm. Gillespie, are you male or female? Male. Male. How old are you? 48. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing around this baby boy? Where were you hanging out at that hospital? I died there. Mm -hmm. How did you die? What happened to you? Very sick. Mm -hmm. Tubes. Misery. How old are you, Gillespie? 48. 48. So why is it that you were attracted to this young boy? This little baby? It was close, mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. And once you attached to him, what did you make him feel? What did he feel from you? What have you been In, doing? Inadequate. Today? Inadequate. And why is that, Gillespie? Why do you feel inadequate? I left my family with a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. So, Gillespie, why is it that when John tried to Get all of these entities out. Why did you stay? What are you afraid of? I'm at home in the feet. Mm -hmm. What do you do to his feet? Make them hurt. Mm -hmm. Make them tingle. What Make do you, him numb. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to do with his big toe? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick the big toe? It was easy. It was easy. <laughs> oh. So, Gillespie, what is the reason why you didn't go home after you transitioned out of that body? I didn't want to be punished for not taking care of my family. Ah, I see. Well, Gillespie, it's been a long time. Are you ready to go home now? Yes. It is. All right. So, Gillespie, before we do that, I want you to find that spark of light within you and tell me when you find it. That's the light of the Creator. Tell me when you spot that light. Okay. All right, now, Gillespie, make that light very big. Make it as big as your whole being. And when you can make it that big, make it even brighter. Make it as bright as a star. 
Tell me how that feels, Gillespie, to be shining as bright as a star. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, as you shine as a bright star, is there any need for you to be hanging around his feet? No. No. So go ahead and begin pulling your energy, all of that darkness in there. Pull it out, please. Pull it out from the roots. And John, I want you to go down to your feet and tell me what you see inside. What does it look like from the inside? Looks like an alien, mm -hmm. an alien tentacled being. Mm -hmm. Dark brown, black. All right. So Gillespie. Tentacles in all the toes. All right. So I'd like for you to begin, Gillespie, pulling all of those tentacles out. And John, from the inside, I want you to use a tool, light, water, whatever is going to zap all of that from the inside and heal it. What would you like to use? Vacuum. All right, so let's begin vacuuming it out. And Gillespie, keep pulling it out from the roots. And I'm going to ask for Archangel Raphael to come and stand by, and you can give him all of that gook. Pull it all out. And John, when you're done, give Archangel Raphael the entire vacuum so he can get rid of all of that. Now, Gillespie. You're still black in the toe. All right. Just keep pulling it out, please. Pull it all out. Okay, I think I got it. Very good. So, Gillespie, are you ready now to take that trip back home? Yes. All right, very good. What would you like to tell John, John before you leave? I can hear you. What would you like to tell John before you leave? You've been making him feel inadequate all his life. It was my problem, not yours. I'm sorry I made you feel it. Mm -hmm. John, what would you like to tell Gillespie? Can you forgive him? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go, Gillespie. All You're right. forgiven. So now, Gillespie, I want you to go ahead through the top of his head. Feel yourself out through that portal, and Archangel Michael is there. Go ahead and take his hand, and he will escort you right back to where you came from, from the source. And tell me when you're there, Gillespie. I'm there. Tell me if there's anybody there to greet you. Grandparents. Mm, how does it feel? Mm hmm Gillespie, may the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you so much for that. And now I'd like for Archangel Raphael to go ahead and begin filling his feet and his toes with that beautiful, brilliant light of yours. Go ahead and begin filling that space. And I'd like to speak with the higher self and tell me how you see his toes now. Filled with pinkish white light. Wonderful, beautiful, beautiful. Would you do a scan and see if there's any of these that still are affecting him now? Darkness in the back left of my head. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what that is. Let's bring that over, bring that energy over. You can express yourself now, are you male or female? Who am I speaking with, please? Gil. Gil? Gil, how old are you? Seventeen. Seventeen. That's a young age, Gil, to have lost your life. Car wreck. Car wreck. So what happened to you, Gil? What happened to your body? I 
I rolled the car over and my head got crushed. Mm -hmm. So why did you choose John? What was happening to John at the time that attracted you to him? He was depressed in high school. Mm -hmm. I found a place. Mm -hmm. I stayed. So what have you been doing to him all this time? Headaches. Headaches? Mm-hmm. Anything else? Neck. Neck pain. Neck pain. Gil, would you like to be free of all this pain, finally? Yes. All right. So, Gil, I'd like for you to go ahead and find that spark of light inside of you and fill it with that beautiful light from the divine. Make it brighter and brighter until it takes over your whole body. And tell me when you have it filled. I'm ready. Well, before you go, we need to help heal that that car wreck injury. I'd like for you to see your body after your car wreck and tell me what it looks like. What does that body my, look my like? My head's smashed and my neck's broken. All right, so I'd like for you now, Gil, to use that brilliant light that you have to go ahead, beam it towards that body and begin to heal that body. Heal that head, heal your neck, Get that body back. Tell me how it feels to have that head and neck. It's good. Beautiful. Are you ready to go now? Yes. All right. Go up through the top of his, his head, please. Archangel Michael is there. Take his hand, please. And he will take you straight home. Tell me what you see. My girlfriend. Mm. What does she say to you? She forgives me, and she's been waiting on me. Very she good. died in the car wreck, too. Mm, very good. Gil, may the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you very much. And now I'd like Archangel Raphael to begin filling that space where Gil was with that brilliant light. Healing it. Allowing all of that to be filled with that healing energy. I'd like to ask the higher self while Archangel Raphael is healing if there are any other areas in his body that are being affected. Left shoulder blade, left, left to back, under the shoulder blade. Under the shoulder blade, all right. So let's bring that energy up, 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 up. You can express yourself now. Who am I speaking with, please? I'm not a person. You're not a person. All right. So tell me what that injury is. What does that discomfort come from? I was stabbed in the back. You were stabbed in the back. All right. So I'd like for you now to go back to that moment in time and space when you are stabbed in that space. Tell me what year it is. 1783. Mm -hmm. And what's happening at this time? Where are you? Scotland. Scotland. And let's find out what is happening before you're stabbed. Where are you? I'm in a... I'm in a... an alehouse. Mm-hmm. And what's happening in that alehouse? One of my enemies came up and stabbed me in the back mm -hmm. from another clan. 
Now I'd like for you to take a good look at who your enemy is and let's find out what your connection is with this man. Where do you know him from in a previous life? Who was he? I'm seeing somebody that Reminds me of Zorro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what unfinished business do you have with this man? What happened to make him want to stab he, you? He he thought I had done something I hadn't done. Mm -hmm. He, he thought I had hurt his wife. I didn't even know his wife. Mm -hmm. I, I had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with anything. Mm -hmm. He just thought I was. He thought I was the guy. And what did he do? He stabbed me in the back. Mm -hmm. So, now can you understand? that this is something that you've been carrying for a long time? Can you forgive this man for not knowing any better? Understanding that all of us make mistakes yes. sometimes? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'd like for you to go ahead and see this man in front of you. And I'd like for you to extend to him your hand and forgive him. Forgive him for not knowing any better. I forgive you. Mm -hmm. So now I'd like for you to begin pulling that knife out of your back. And I'd like for you to hand that knife over to him. Done. Very good. And now I'd like for our Archangel Raphael to begin healing that spot. And I'd like for you now to disconnect the cord that connects that lifetime to this one. Allowing that lifetime to drift away. Knowing that you have now disconnected it in with love. Beautiful, thank you. So what else do we see in the body now that we need to take care of before we continue? John questioned his thyroid. Would you tell him what's going on with his thyroid? His endocrine system's messed up. Mm -hmm. Why is that? It's, it's hereditary. It's mm -hmm. the chemicals just aren't right. All right. So let's find out what in the DNA, where it originated. Let's go back to the time when the entire family was affected by the origin of this in endocrine system being messed up. Let's find out what happened to put them all in this state. Give him a picture of what happened. I'm s I'm seeing a chemist, uh, mm -hmm. a, a pharmacist chemist. Mm -hmm. And what is this pharmacist chemist doing? He's mixing powders. Mm -hmm. It's a it's it's to cure something, but it's it's wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's what wrong. is that? What is that doing? This this chemical. I think it I think it poisoned. I think it poisoned the people that took it. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And their their endocrine systems didn't work right anymore. All right. So let's find out how we can go wow. back. <laughs> let's go back in time now. And we know that we can change timelines, we could change results. Let's go back and let's get that chemist to create the proper chemistry. Let's rewind. He picked the wrong bottle. All right, so let's change that outcome and let's give him the right bottle. Give him the right bottle now to mix. He had mixed a brown chemical and it was supposed to be a white one. Mm -hmm. And he just wasn't thinking. He was, he was daydreaming. He was thinking about something else. Very good. So let's go back now, rewind that, and let's begin from the beginning where the chemist now picks the right bottle. Let's pick it. His concoction worked then. Mm -hmm. All right. So now... Some some lady, it had something to do with asthma or something, and it helped her. All right, so now let's see how that has now affected all of the DNA going down the line of all of those that her were her offspring. Let's see how that's affected them now. Well, in that, in that timeline, that problem doesn't happen. All right, so let's shift all of this to that timeline now. And as you shift... He's in it. Wonderful. So now I'd like for you to do a scan of his endocrine system and tell me how it's changed. It's still not perfect, but it doesn't have that problem anymore. All right, so let's find out what we need to do to correct it. Can we begin reprogramming the cells so that they're not in on high alert anymore? We need to inform all of the cells in his body of what we've just done so that they have a new template now to work with. They're already that way. They're in this timeline. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. No, no corrections needed. Wonderful. So now let's find out what's going on with his stomach, why he has slow digestion. What's causing that? I am. Mm, all right. So, who is the one that's causing it? The high, me, the higher self. All right. So, why are you slowing down his digestion? He needs to eat less, eat light, eat different. Mm -hmm. He needs to. needs to be more energetic and less physical. Mm -hmm. So right now, he's kind of trying to figure out what to eat. What would you suggest his diet be like? Fruit, digestible vegetables, mm -hmm. or easy to digest vegetables. Mm -hmm. Less protein, mm -hmm. he'll acclimate to it. He'll acclimate to less protein, less protein powder. Fewer eggs. Mm -hmm. He already doesn't eat meat, mm -hmm. except for eggs. Well, he's making an excuse and making them into some sort of fruit. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they're given. Mm -hmm. Given by the chickens. Okay. So is that okay for him to eat the eggs, or just mm. less of them? 
Eggs are good. Good. Eggs are good, but less less of everything. Just okay. What about water? What's going on with the water? He's been he's been guided to drink essential water, but that's a little expensive. Is alkaline, fluoride-free essential water some healthier? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there a better way that he can create his own water that would be good for him? Some place with well water that's, that's not fluoridated and chlorinated. Okay. Like a spring water, perhaps? So no fluoride. Some spring waters are good. Okay, good. Good. He says he's had an urge to move, but he doesn't know where to move. Should he buy a house? Would he be happy at the pines? He wants to be a homeowner, mm -hmm. but he's already in his sixties. Mm -hmm. Well, you've told him he, he can manifest anything. He doesn't want debt. Mm -hmm. And he would be happier. He would be happier alone than in a in a community. Mm -hmm. So where do you see him being, though he would be the happiest? He would be happy happiest in a in a loose community of like minded people. Each with their own homes, but like sharing gardens, mm -hmm. sharing wells, sharing the work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Could you guide them to some place like that? We'll see. He might not want to. Mm -hmm. Okay. He'll he'll get the he'll get the guidance he needs. Mm -hmm. Well, he wants to help learning to be at ease with people. Would these like-minded people be easy to get around yes, with? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is that really what is is the the uh, discomfort is the fact that he's not around people like him? Yes, mm -hmm. he doesn't know people interested in the things he's interested in or mm -hmm. with the same passions, the same... He's always wondered if there were people somewhere like him that that's where he should be. Mm -hmm. But they're everywhere. You just have to find them and get to know them. Just get out of the house every once in a while? Yes. Uh-huh. Well, he also wants to learn to accept and love himself. Has this... This has helped. This has helped a lot. Very good. Especially um, Gil and Gillespie. Mm -hmm. They were... This has helped, yes. Wonderful. Why is it that he feels such an intense need to protect his own freedom? Is this from... He learned long, long ago that... He's happier loosely with other beings, but not closely with other beings. Mm -hmm. He's happier, he's a lot happier with himself and with his own time and his own activities than with constantly interacting with others. He's, mm -hmm. he, he, he needs to be alone. Okay, good. So he doesn't need to really worry about it or think about it. That's how, who he is. That's, that's who he is. Okay, good. Uh, are there any beliefs that are hindering him anymore? Yes. Mm -hmm. He 
he thinks he's forced into believing the 3D illusion, the mm -hmm. 3D time-space illusion. Mm -hmm. He thinks he's forced into being part of the reality everybody experiences. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a belief. Mm -hmm. If you believe it, then yes, you're, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. The trick is to believe beyond, believe more than that. Believe the world you want, and you can make it. Mm -hmm. Like we were discussing before this session. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's, we live in a different world. And it's hard to believe anything that is universally not believed. Mm -hmm. But that's the way everyone needs to go. Mm -hmm. We need to believe in the new earth. We need to believe in the transition. We need to believe in raising our frequencies and being light beings instead of chained to the physical. We need to become less and less physical. Mm -hmm. Less and less c concerned with physical things, possessions, boundaries, politics, economics, all that stuff, we need to, you get the world you focus on and we need to focus away from those things. Mm -hmm. Why is it that now there's so much focus away from that though? There's more than ever, I think in my entire lifetime, I've never heard so much politics on the news. Never in my life have I heard anybody talk about the president. People don't like change. Mm -hmm. so what's change happening? is scary. People don't like change. And so as, it change, as change pulls one way, mm -hmm. all the people on the other side are going to be pulling and pulling the other way because change is scary. Change is hard. Mm -hmm. People re will resist it all they can. And the trick is to get enough people wanting positive change. Mm -hmm. But, but you can't decide for anybody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't do it to them. You can't, you can't change their views. You can't change what their goals are. Mm -hmm. You just have to, uh, have to look, show by example and all the, all the light bringers and all the, the positive people need to express their positivity and influence the people around them. Mm -hmm. I don't mean forcibly, but just be a positive influence on those around you and little by little the change will come. Wonderful. So all of these light workers that came, all of these teams that John was on, all of those others, they're all here now. So to the light workers, what is their mission? What should they be doing? to make the positive changes, to bring in this new reality, this positive um, view of the, the earth that he saw, those possibility. What's the best way? Refuse to have negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Do not give any of your energy to negativity. Make your energy positive and keep it positive, and that spreads. Mm -hmm. That's infectious. Mm -hmm. What happens if something negative pops up? Do we zap it? Hey, it's, 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 <laughs> it's the old adage about make lemonade mm -hmm. when you get lemons. Okay. Uh, there's a good side to everything. You look at the positive, find out how to how to turn what you thought of as a disaster into really a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity. Something good can come of it. Wonderful, wonderful. Good. Thank you so much, it's, it's, it's just a matter of optimism. Good. So just continue to be the light for others, the positive. Be positive for everyone. Wonderful. Good. Now, we talked about Paul being the one that helps him. And he said that he wants to have a guide that will assist him when he exits his body and have a meaningful out-of-body 
uh, experience. These out-of-body experiences that, that he likes to have. Who can help him? Is that Paul? Or someone else? Paul will do it if he's not incarnated. Okay, good. So when he's doing his, his work to go out of body, call Paul. Good. Call Paul. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> it sounds like a Oh no, he's slogan. got his own slogan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's what it sounds to me. <laughs> Are there it's any... not St. Paul, it's just Paul. It's just, just Paul, uh... yes. Are there any other imbalances in any of his bodies that might manifest as physical ailments. We know that we had the, the backstabbing. He has questions about his teeth, his eyes. He's had eye problems all of his life mm -hmm. because he doesn't like what he sees. Okay. So it's, I guess it's a manifestation of that. Mm -hmm. It's a, he's had floaters, he's had cataracts, he's had astigmatism, he has scars in his retinas. Well, and he, it's all because he doesn't like what he sees, so he's not going to see as much of it. Well, he wants his right eye healed. He knows that you can direct the cells to heal themselves. The body knows how to heal itself. And John knows how to manifest. I can't do that for him now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a matter of making a hazy lens clear, but mm -hmm. I can't make that physical change. Now you said now. Can it be done gradually? As the cells die out and reproduce. Maybe with maybe with help mm -hmm. more could be done now. All right. Maybe maybe we could at least get it started. All right. So I'd like to call forth the non physical physicians the ones who have helped me in sessions so brilliantly before. And I'd like for Archangel Raphael, the healer, to also come in. And I'd like them to begin working on him today, as we speak, and as he sleeps, if they will continue working on him while he's resting, so that gradually all of those cells will begin reproducing with a new template of a brand new eye, so he can see. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. What's going on with his teeth? There's a recurring infection. In an upper left tooth. Mm -hmm. then inflames the nerve and makes all the teeth hurt. What's the origin of that? I think it's just under a filling. Mm -hmm. does, just, he, does he need to get that taken care of? Let's take care of it energetically. All right, very good. To heck with the dentist. All right. <laughs> Tell them what you're using. White light. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Is there anything mm. else? There? Hang on. Uh huh. And tooth stuff doesn't like to change. Mm. I think it's done. 
Good. Right. Is there anything else that you can do with that white light in his body today to make him feel help, healthier, happier, more energetic? At ease. He fills his body with white light every night and every morning, so he's wonderful. He 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 glows brightly at least twice a day. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have him yeah. glowing like a golden child when he leaves here today. Beautiful. Thank you. Is there anything else that you would like to tell him today? There's things he wanted to know that he didn't ask in his mm -hmm. questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know where he's from. Mm -hmm. He's from the Pleiades. Okay. He wanted to know how many lives he has had on Earth. Mm -hmm. He's had 838. Wonderful. Is this his last one? No. <laughs> yes. I don't think he wants to hear that one, does he? Is he going to want to come back? There's many timelines. Mm -hmm. There's many possibilities. Okay. Very good. But as it is right now, it looks like he's coming back. Wonderful. Okay. Well, good. Now, is there anything else that he could have asked that he didn't, that you would like to tell him at this time? He was a sixth density being before he came to Earth, mm -hmm. before he agreed and had the 838 lives. Is that why he has all these powers that he knows about? He remembers this? Yes. Okay, good. Good. Anything else? I'm sure he wanted to know a lot more, but mm, not, not, I'm not going to go back through all of his mental lists. <laughs> Good. Now, he'd also asked if I have any physical ailments or questions today. Do you see any physical things that I need to take care of today? I think you could use you could use some more energy in your head, in your brain, in your in other words, you're tired. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm hmm You're tired. Yes. Let's let's give you some white light energy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Is there anything else or are we complete today? We're complete. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> How was it for you? That was, that was pretty interesting. Yeah? Pretty interesting. How, do you well, How long do you think this journey was? And it feels it's funny. Like, I feel like I've been asleep. When I opened my eyes, it felt like you were sleeping. It felt like I just wake up someplace where I didn't know where I was or when I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, do you remember about your session? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. There's some fuzzy parts, but I remember. I remember being the lawyer in. Uh -huh. I think it was Scotland. Mm -hmm. And I remember helping people. Yeah. And I like. I liked that job. Yeah. I liked that life. That was a good life. Yeah. And then you were uh, an IT guy. And I remember the native, the native guy building fish traps mm -hmm. or designing fish traps so that they didn't. 
Yeah, he would uh, just design uh, fish traps so they could just set them out in the river, and then the next morning they'd have fish. Wonderful. Nobody had ever thought of that before. <laughs> so, how long do you feel this journey was? You said you felt like you were sleeping and you woke up. How did it feel to you? It only felt like maybe 40 or 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. We're on a, an hour and 55 minutes. Wow. <laughs> so over twice. Over yeah. twice as long. Yeah. Pretty good, huh? So, Is this something so potentially over half of the stuff that, or what happened that I don't remember, yeah. Is it over half of what I do remember? Do you remember what? any entities? Um, what was that guy's name? Gilstrap or Gil, Gilmore Gil? or Gil? No, oh, it was two names. They both started with G's. Gil, Gil and uh, Gil Gillespie. Gillespie. I'm glad they're gone. Yeah. I hope they're happy, but I'm glad they're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what do you think? Is this well, why didn't they leave? You want to share? Well, because they I mean, when all these, I've been through so many meditations myself, making sure they were all gone, you and know, those guys wouldn't leave. Sometimes you need help. That's why you're here. Sometimes you need a little bit extra. I can't remember <laughs> anything that was uh, bad that I wouldn't. No. I mean, surely, I nothing. mean, if it'll help anybody, if it, if it's there was nothing in if there. If it's interesting enough, <laughs> I mean, I'm not like your. Super dupers, but <laughs> doesn't matter. You get something from that. It was interesting and helpful. Then yeah, yeah, sure, help, sure. So here we are. Well, what did you expect? What did you expect? <laughs> I expected to to feel like I was in a deeper trance. Uh huh. So how did it feel? It felt light, but I managed. I also expected to have a big problem with my an the analytical part of my brain, mm -hmm. second guessing and questioning and all that. Yes. I didn't experience any of that. Wow, isn't period. that wonderful? None of that. I decided I'm just going to flow with this. Uh huh. And as the thoughts come, they come from somewhere, and yeah. I'm going to trust that where, yeah. they, where they came from is, uh -huh. is good, you uh -huh. know, what, where I want. And that seemed to work. I mean, I just, as the thoughts came, I just spoke them. So. That's exactly, I, I, exactly how we do it. Now, what was interesting was the way we, it began. Uh, you were hiking. And I'd like to go to that trail. <laughs> <laughs> you can I mean, manifest I, I mean, it. I, I, can, I can see the bridge and I can see yeah. the little road and I think, hey, I, I, I haven't hiked that trail. <laughs> but, it, you know, because I'm, I'm channeling also. This is what people don't understand. I am getting my thoughts also. So as, as my client is experiencing something, I am also being given scenes as to what to do. So this is why I get my questions the way I get them. And I used to hike a lot. So. Yeah. So when, when we were talking before this, uh, there was a story how you used your fingers to scan a room mm -hmm. to find the key. Uh, his his uh, roommate had lost the key and he scanned the room with his fingers and was able to, f to locate it. Mm -hmm. So that's when I saw a portal okay. in, that, in the woods. And that's where okay. I had you locate um, that portal. And I was astounded at, at one point, I might have started laughing, I don't remember, but... Here's Tashi. <laughs> I know, I know, but it, you know, everybody likes to see Tashi. Thank you, thank you for letting me pet you. Yes. All right. <laughs> anyway, when I was walking down that road, yes, and you had me hold my fingers up and look through them, I thought Shh. I, I was skeptical for a moment, yeah. and I decided to just flow with it, and I just kept watching, and slowly I, I started to see the shimmering, and the shimmering got brighter, and it turned kind of orange, and, there we and went. I thought, well, <laughs> you know, holy cow, you know, what, I mean, what can you say? <laughs> I'm you know, in a bookstore! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I was in a bookstore, and I love yeah. bookstores. So. Yeah, <laughs> Tashi did that. And so, when, when you saw yourself dressed like that, I saw that first, that's why I kept asking you. The guy in the top hat? Yes, I saw, I saw, I well, saw I you saw dressed, I yeah, mean, I saw you dressed like that before you told me, and that's why I asked that's you cool. to, to, you know, I'd seen the hat, and I saw the, the coat, and uh, it was very interesting. That's so we were cool. very connected during this, this session. And there was another spot that, I can't remember where it was now, but 
I had a thought, and right when I thought it, then you said it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know who influenced whom, but it happened. I mean, it was like it was like we were linked. Yeah, and this is what happens during these sessions: is that you know I'm very connected, and you know I'm in a trance the whole time too, and that's why it flows the way it flows. It's just it, it's just very good. So, how do you feel? How does your body feel? I feel energized. Mm -hmm. My arms don't, don't, still don't feel normal. Oh, I forgot the show. Anyway. Yeah. The, the hands holding the selenite. Yeah. My fists and my or well, I, di I didn't squeeze tightly. I just they were loose. But yeah. my hands were tingling. My arms were tingling all the way up. But it was a good feeling. It was an energetic feeling, not yeah. a not a painful feeling. And I liked that. Yeah. And that's that's almost gone away now. But yeah. I still feel it. So. Oh, well, you'll hold on to that shungai a little bit. So what do you what would you yeah. tell people who are thinking of doing this? Well, I recommend it just because, I mean, there's there's nothing to lose. All it is is an insightful experience. I mean, yes. you're going to learn more about yourself. You're going to help yourself. You're going to heal yourself. You're going to... Yeah. I mean, there's no reason not to. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, and if it's if it's all personal or something, it doesn't have to be online. Just, right, right. And this was, it's, it's, it was all... What was really interesting is when I asked about that, your digest, digestive system and your higher self says, I did that. Do you remember that? Yes, I did that. Yes. It's like, no, that's, I'm doing that. I'm slowing down the digestive system because you need to be eating very light. Well. You're doing it. You're forced to do I, it. And I've been doing it out of being forced <laughs> to do it. <laughs> Very good. So uh, but, this was... This but was I a, wonder what I'll look like in a year. <laughs> oh, be, no, but they'll keep you healthy. They'll keep you healthy. So any other insight that, that you got from this session? You've just got to go with it. Go with the... Mm -hmm. Just trust the thoughts. I mean, thoughts come from somewhere. You're not... Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you feel like you're making something up... You got that thought from somewhere, and exactly. that somewhere is your higher self, and that's, that's exactly right. who we're trying to talk to. So that's right, and and people always wonder. There's a difference. There's your conscious mind. That's the the one that's always berating you and telling you you can't do stuff. But that those thoughts that come are are very very natural. And a couple of times I noticed that I switched to I, that's and okay. I, and I realized, hey, wait a minute, I thought my higher self was talking here. And so a couple switch. of times it switched back and forth, it does and, and I noticed it, but yeah. I didn't want anything I could do about it. I just and kept it, going. And it does happen. It does mm -hmm. happen all the time. It, it's it's not a big deal. It's mm -hmm. you're like switching perspectives, and but uh, the funny part was with the IT uh, uh, realization. My career was in IT, mm -hmm. and. It just seemed like, oh man, I was even an IT in a native village, you know. I mean, it's like <laughs> that's my goal in the world, you know, to, yeah. to go and help Fix. people with technical problems. Right, right. <laughs> and we do that, and, and we wonder, you know, why is it that we have these skills that come natural? And we've been doing this lifetime after lifetime. Wonderful experience. It was great. So I hope you enjoyed this session. If you'd like a session with me, go to my website, albaweinman.com. Uh, I do travel all over the world. If you'd like to sign up for my mailing list to find out where I'm going to, just go to my out of town page. There's a little link on the bottom. Sign up and you will get the newsletter as to where I'm going to next. And how far did you drive to come down here? I'm from Anderson, South Carolina. And I drove to North Carolina. And then with other family members, I drove all the way, way down here. So. I don't know. It was a two-day drive. First day we got to Jacksonville. Second day we got to Miami. Mm-hmm. It was worth um, the drive? Yes. Your yes, whole family yes. is going to enjoy this. 900 miles, something like that. I mean, it's a long way. So thank you for watching. I hope I get to meet you someday soon. Thanks. Bye. Get the hug now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.